Hello crypto fam, thanks for tuning back to my channel. I have been unwell for quite some time and that's why I couldn't make more videos. Nonetheless, show must go on and I'm back and we'll be discussing today what are soul bound tokens. Now soul bound tokens have been discussed quite a lot lately and not without a reason. We will find that out in this video. Now grab a cup of coffee because today I want to talk about the paper that is written on soul bound tokens as well as talk about the use cases that excites me the most. We will talk about what use cases still doesn't work in Web3 world and how soul bound tokens could be a solution to those. Now the paper is quite comprehensive and certain portions of it such as public goods and quadratic funding, measuring decentralization etc. I will be covering that up into a separate video where we'll discuss these topics in more detail. Now I'm going to show you up the paper that is written on soulbound tokens and I'll also give you the link into the description. So be sure to check out the description and you can go to the link and read the whole paper. Now there are three authors of this paper which is Vitalik Butrian who is the founder of Ethereum, E. Glenwell who works with Microsoft and Pooja Olawar who works with Flashbot and the name of the paper is Decentralized Society finding web3's soul see now we don't see web3 as only limited to providing an alternate to current financial system rather we wish to build a decentralized society in web3 now there are many core economic use cases in real world right now that cannot work in web3 world because there is no way to attach an identity to a wallet and we will discuss about this identity aspect in more detail in our upcoming sections let me move to the introduction section of the video and as you can see there are still some activities for which we are dependent on web2 centralized solution yet. One of them is NFT artists still rely on centralized platforms like OpenSea and Twitter for scarcity and initial prominence. Initial prominence means that these centralized solutions provide a way to verify the source of these NFTs. Now next is DAOs, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, using social media profiles like Twitter and Facebook to prevent Sybil attacks. Now Sybil attacks generally means that the same attacker creates a lot of different accounts and tries to gain access to majority of the system. In Web3 world, it's quite easy to create multiple wallets. There is no way to know if a single person holds all these numerous wallets. I'll link a Wikipedia article in description where you can go and read more about Sybil attacks. Now third is many people still use Coinbase and Binance to store their coins. And current decentralized solutions like keeping your coins in a hardware wallet is not user friendly and has a little bit of learning curve for most users. We will discuss eventually how soul bound tokens could be a way to solve this problem. Now before proceeding further, let me talk about what is a soul bound token. It is a non-transferable NFT and NFT means a non-fungible token that is a token which is unique and in case of soul bound tokens it represents an NFT that cannot be transferred out of a wallet. Now let us talk about an another use case which is under collateralized lending and which is quite a common thing in the real world and how that is lacking in web3 because we cannot attach an identity to a wallet yet. Now currently only over collateralized lending happens in web3 where you provide more than equivalent amount of loan in cryptocurrencies. From here on I will also use SBT as a short form for soul bound tokens. Okay let me pull up an article from Investopedia which explains what is an unsecured loan. By the way under collateralized lending and unsecured loans mostly means the same thing. An unsecured loan is a loan that doesn't require any type of collateral. Instead of relying on a borrower's asset as security, lenders approve unsecured loans based on a borrower's credit worthiness. Examples of unsecured loans include personal loans, student loans and credit cards. The word credit worthiness is very important here. You might be aware of credit scores for example when you use credit cards and pay on time your credit score improves. Now SBTs here can be used to attach person's credential to a wallet and can be used to provide credit worthiness and subsequently can be used to provide under collateralized loans. But the question is how will we attach a person's credential to a wallet and that we will discuss when we talk about the implementation part in this paper. Now towards the end of this introduction section, 
we talk about decentralized society or DSOC in short. Now, if I were to explain it to you in layman terms, DSOC is an attempt to solve problems existing in current society where the governance is generally vulnerable to be swayed to make decisions favoring certain powerful and rich group of people. And that is in nutshell what DSOC and decentralized society can do for us. All these use cases will actually tie up together to make this decentralized society. And in the next part, now the next part is outline, which just states what SBTs are and what use case it can solve, which we already discussed. So we'll move on to the souls section. And souls just means wallets. They will hold public non-transferable NFTs. But there could be a need to have private SBTs as well, such as medical history. And if we have too many public NFTs associated with a wallet, it could be easy to identify an individual and it could be easy again that that individual gets judged by social norms, etc. So we might have to find a balance between public and private NFTs and that we will eventually discuss in the video. Now authors do note that public tokens will initially be easy to validate as proof of concept and in later sections they also talk about programmable privacy for other use cases that we just talked like medical history etc. Now generally these SBTs can be issued by other counterparties such as individuals, companies or institutions and that can actually make it verifiable and powerful mechanism for background check. Now as we were discussing in our previous video how do we attach credentials to a wallet? Now this could be a way let's say I went to an university that university can issue a SBT to my wallet and that SBT will actually be non-transferable NFT. I cannot transfer it out of my wallet. That's how actually these SBTs can be issued and that will be very powerful use case because those SBTs which are issued by institutions are credible, legible. We'll be able to find that this wallet is legit by seeing what all SBTs they have issued. Another example which is also given in the paper could be that the Ethereum Foundation could be a soul that issues SBTs to souls who attended DEV conference. Now this is very important and pay very careful attention to this point that there is no requirement for a soul to be linked to a legal name or for there to be any protocol level attempt to ensure one soul per human. That means you could have multiple SBTs and one for your medical records, one for universities etc etc. And this is the use case that I am excited about the most. Currently in Web2 world, background checks take an awful lot of time and SBTs could be generally a much more efficient way to perform background checks. Now let's move on to the section of stairway to DSOC. The first use case that we talked about in introduction section was that NFT artists still rely on centralized platforms like OpenSea to prove source of their NFTs is credible. A solution for this is that artists can issue SBTs from their wallets or souls and the more SBT issued from a soul and the easier it would be to verify that the soul holding this SBTs is a credible artist. One more great use case and the one that excites me again is solving the problem of deep fakes. Now as you all know misleading videos created using deep fakes are a very big problem today. With SBTs, we can link it to the source of these videos and the soul. Then we can check the soul for its credibility. Now let's move on to the next part which is soul lending. And we have already talked about under collateralized lending in the beginning. And we already talked about credit scores and currently how centralized systems calculate credit worthiness today generally has bias to minorities and poor people who don't have sufficient data about their financial transactions. Now SBTs could unlock a censorship resistant bottom up alternative to this top down commercial and social credit systems. One important point to note here is loans and credit lines could be non transferable but revocable SBTs. Once loans are repaid, they can be burned or replaced with proof of repayment. This is very important point so that the borrowers who try to cheat and try to create new wallets to escape the loans will lack SBTs to have any meaningful way to prove credit worthiness. And that's how you can actually build credit worthiness on chain by making your payments on time and getting a proof of your payments to your wallet or 
soul now if you all remember the third use case in our introduction section was that the people use centralized exchanges like binance and coinbase to hold their coins and since as you know once a private key is lost funds in the wallet cannot be recovered so people rely on these centralized solutions now a solution that is proposed in the paper is that and i think this is very important step towards major adoption of web3 and you all should pay very careful attention to this one step is community recovery where people have a list of guardians consisting of friends institutions etc however it has its own drawback in that guardians can pass away or people fall in touch etc second much more better solution would be to tie souls membership across communities as you can see in the screen some of the communities for community recovery could be employers clubs colleges or participation in dao etc in this model recovering a souls private keys would require a member from a qualified majority of souls communities to consent next use case is soul drops now usually the crypto airdrops that happen currently spts can actually be used to perform better airdrops as an example that is given in the paper let's say a dao wants to convene a community within particular layer 1 protocol called soul drop to devs who hold 3 out of last 5 conference attendance spts now moving on to our next use cases related to daos decentralized autonomous organizations now usually voting happens in daos based on tokens held by wallets and generally wealthy people or institutions can buy up majority of tokens to bring decision in their favors now sbts can again help by let's say checking correlation between sbts held by souls who support a particular vote and applying a lower vote weight to voters who are highly correlated this way we can ensure that the same person or institution does not sway result in its favor we'll talk about in more details about dao civil attacks and sbts as solution in an another video now i'll be creating a separate video where we will be discussing the next few topics such as measuring decentralization of an ecosystem public goods ai leveraging sbts and plural networks so i am now directly jumping to the implementation challenges section now and one key concern in implementation of sbts is privacy now on one hand if you have too many public sbts you reveal too much information about yourself making you vulnerable to social control and purely private sbts may also lead to private channels that can again lead to the discounting of correlation for governance hence we need to find a balance between both now one solution would be to store data off chain leaving only hash of data on chain now storing data off chain will let people to choose to reveal contents of their sbts only when they wish to a better solution is to use zero knowledge proofs a branch of cryptography usually used to enable privacy preserving transfer of assets for example with zero knowledge proofs you can prove a statement without providing any more information now the concept of zero knowledge proof in itself a topic deep enough and we will create a separate video for this topic now the second biggest challenge is cheating souls it is possible for sbt issuers to accept bribe and issue sbts to souls through offline channels which happens currently in real world and if the issuer is an institution this is again a very much a possibility there are no proper solutions to this again authors are just giving you a general direction in which we can go and solve this cheating souls problem i'll give you the link into the description of the paper so you can go and read out all these general directions that are given in the paper to solve this problems like encouraging whistle brewer using peer prediction theories and using zk technology etc now we will move on to the section of soul worth or how do we create sbts now since currently wallets don't support community recovery mechanisms some solutions could be first one is proto sbt which is revocable they can be burned and reissued so as a starting point we can have sbts which are actually transferable but revocable and can be burned and reissued second one is community recovery wallets and proto souls etc now i am just moving on to the conclusion part of the paper and we can again talk about this community recovery solutions into more detail into another separate video that will be a follow up to this one now into the conclusion part the conclusion is that these use cases are just the beginning of decentralized society or desoc and that virtual worlds can even be more complex and when they are at the intersection of virtual and physical worlds they will need even more sophisticated solutions than this this is just 
the beginning towards a decentralized society and there are some open questions that we have discussed throughout the videos like how DAOs can maintain public state yet ensure civil attack resistant, how does privacy conflict with correlation discounting etc. Now these are just the beginning steps where communities come together and work towards general benefit and ensuring public goods are funded appropriately. Okay, so it was a huge paper and we will stop here for this video. We'll come up with other topics that we discussed as a follow up of this video and hope you all liked the video. If you did, please give a like to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please follow me on all other social media channels and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.